Kyoto is Japan's historical and cultural capital. It is home to a whopping 17 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and over 2,000 temples and shrines, plus a variety of other historical landmarks and museums. Kyoto is unlike any other place in the world. Kyoto was the capital of Japan and thus the home place of the emperor from the years 794 to 1869. It was relatively untouched by World War II, which means that a great deal of historical landmarks remain standing and in good condition. Kyoto can be accessed from Tokyo via bus, bullet train, or plane. We recommend bullet train as, with all things considered, it is the fastest and most comfortable at a short 2 hours and 11 minute ride. Once you're in Kyoto, there are a variety of different options for getting around, the most useful being bus, train, taxi, and bicycle. The bus system is probably where you will get the most bang for your buck. Bus fares are a flat 230 yen, which you pay when getting off. They also have 700 yen day passes that allow you to ride as many times as you want anywhere in the city. Those passes can be purchased at Kyoto Station. Even if you don't want to buy a day pass, we would still recommend using Suica or Pasmo transit cards, as these will make payment the most convenient. Going by bike is a fun change of pace, although we wouldn't recommend it during the summer. Links to the bike rental service we used in the description. Taxi is by far the most expensive option, but if you're really trying to avoid crowds or the heat, it could be the best choice. Our favorite spot to eat has to be Nishiki Market. This is a covered five block long shopping street lined with just about every type of Japanese street food you could want. We will be making a full video about this market within the coming weeks, so check that out if you want more info. Look at that stuff. It's huge. Maybe. I think you can kind Yeah, of no, it's like the size of your face. Keep it off. Go for it. <laughs> I can literally eat hundreds of them. Oh my god. Hundreds. Easy. Another food hotspot is Pontocho. This is a narrow alley running alongside the Kama River that gives a really nice traditional feel. Here you'll find a variety of restaurants for any budget. Most restaurants on the riverside also feature terraces built directly over the river that allow a cool dining experience during the summer. If you're in the mood for ramen, Kyoto Station actually has a great ramen street with nine different ramen spots all right next to each other. And the ramen is genuinely really good. And we should know because we tried it all. Of course, no matter what part of the city you're in, you are guaranteed to be surrounded by a whole bunch of great food options. If you happen to get tired of Japanese food while you're here, which probably won't happen, but just in case, we even found a great American style place that's miles better than McDonald's. The main event of Kyoto is of course the historical landmarks. We actually recommend that you try not to go overboard because it can be really easy to get shrined out. As I said, Kyoto has about 2,000 shrines and temples, plus a few castles and whatnot, and you are definitely not going to be able to visit them all. We have selected 11 of our favorite spots that we think all have something unique to offer. We're not saying that you have to visit every one of them, but this is just a list of suggestions so that you can pick what seems most interesting to you. But again, try not to overdo it. First on the list is Kiyomizu Dera. This is probably one of the busiest temples in Kyoto, which brings me to an important tip. Get up early. Some parts of Kyoto are so busy that it can really start to feel like you're just in Disneyland. But you can avoid the crowds if you get up a little bit earlier than everyone else. One day I actually got up at 3.30 a.m. to watch the sunrise and take some photos, and it was my favorite day of the trip by far. Now I don't necessarily recommend that time specifically, but especially for some of the more popular spots, I would shoot to be there around 6 to 6.30 a.m. Keep in mind that the train and bus system start running at about 5 a.m., so if you want to go any earlier than that, taxi or bike are your only options. Especially in the case of Kiyomizu, which opens right at 6 a.m., it's just overall a much better experience with no crowds, and also, of course, much prettier for photos. This temple is famous for its 43-foot terrace on one side of the main building. It also has excellent views of the valley, and is especially beautiful in the fall, although significantly more crowded. The Niomon Gate and Pagoda at the entrance are also very beautiful. Alright, alright. Nope. Let's go, let's go. Boring. 
Boring. I couldn't do it. Freak. Well, you, you're gonna do it. I have lost my manlyhood. <laughs> We ordered. What's the kakigori in English? Shaved ice. Shaved iced. It's already melting a lot, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's heck of hot out here, so. In order to get to Kiyomizu, you will also have most likely walked through the almost equally as famous Ninenzaka or Sanenzaka shopping districts. These streets have remained relatively unchanged for hundreds of years and are full of traditional matsuya shops. Ninenzaka is the northern portion and Sanenzaka is the southern portion. These are also great spots to visit early in the morning. Especially the area nearby the famous Hokanji Pagoda can get really busy. So if you want the best experience, the early morning is going to be your best bet. I really enjoy just walking around here and, and taking it all in. Ninenzaka is home to the famous Kyoto Starbucks, which is definitely the coolest Starbucks I've ever been to. It's very different, and it's very hard to just recognize this is Starbucks. Yeah, you wouldn't realize. I mean, I, there's a sign, but like, it doesn't look like a Starbucks. Yeah, it's never this outstanding or anything. So what I've heard, it's actually, it, so it used to be just like a regular building, and they actually like built the Starbucks into it. The inside is a like completely... We got our drinks. We got ice, chocolate ice. I mean, chocolate ice. Chocolate milk. Yeah, ice chocolate milk. And this is like vanilla cream flappuccino. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it looked it look good and cold. And then this is New York cheesecake. Yeah. The food is just like in all. Just like a basic Starbucks food. Right. But the way we eat. Yeah, yeah, we're on. We're sitting on our tatami rice mats here. In like kind of like a traditional like. What do you call this in Japanese? Like, like one of no one of these like one of these types of buildings. Like traditional. Of course, this area is also a great spot to buy souvenirs if you're hoping to do that. Just north of Ninenzaka is a temple that will not show up on any travel guide or most any internet search. While I was exploring, I stumbled across this small mountainside temple called Chorakuji, and I think everyone should give it a visit. Okay, I'm just out doing some exploring here. And seriously, this is one of the cool places I've been so far. Tons of bugs. But there's like no one here. And it's like this really cool like shrine, cemetery, temple kind of, oh man, these are old. I have not seen anyone else. And it's actually really cool. Like I just feel like I'm out here and the shrine is super pretty and I'm just here in nature. And seriously, like Studio Ghibli vibes, honestly. I'm gonna get like transported to some other like spirit world or something. Super cool though. Chion In Temple also flies under the radar for a lot of tourists, but we're big fans. This temple features the largest gate of any Buddhist temple in Japan, which stands at an impressive 78 feet tall and 164 feet wide. Beyond that, the temple's garden, in my mind, is among the best we've seen. The great thing about this temple is that because it's a little bit less known than some of the other spots, we found it to be considerably less crowded. Also, fun fact, this shrine was used for certain scenes in the 2003 film, The Last Samurai. Nanzenji is the next spot on our list. This temple is unique in that it has a huge Roman-style aqueduct running right through it. I think this is fun just as a change of pace and to experience something different. After paying an entrance fee, this temple also allows you to climb to the balcony of a large front gate, which is also pretty enjoyable. This is, I think, the only shrine that we've been to where you can like actually climb up the, uh, the gate. The gate, like this is kind of cool. Heian Shrine has our favorite gardens in Kyoto. They are very beautiful and surprisingly not all that crowded. One section of the garden features a covered bridge with spots to sit and even a place to buy fish food so that you can feed the fish and the turtles, which is actually pretty fun. I don't know what it's made of. It looks like it's just made out of like rice. Cool. These guys, they already know what's going on here. They're, they're excited. You can see? Oh look, there's, a, there's, like, there's a big turtle right there. Is that a snapping turtle? Oh! Oh! <laughs> 
Ooh. Oh, this the big guy. Dang. That's strong. Yeah, these big these big turtles, they're um <laughs> taking all the Oh, 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 oh. Right, okay. They're fighting over it. Or a bigger one. It's a big one. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> this is nice. I like this. It's just like a little, kind of a little path over the over the river. Yeah, this is like a bridge. Or not river, but. This is bridge, but it still has like, mm -hmm. what do you call it? The bench? Yeah. The bench is like on the, the both sides. Mm -hmm. And then you can just hear the nice like wind chime. Yeah. It's a nice place to relax. I feel like when you're in Kyoto, like it's pretty easy to get like shrined out because there's just so many, so many shrines and temples. But they are actually all really cool, and like they all are slightly different. I think some are more similar than others, but like we've still been pretty consistently impressed. You know, like when it gets near the end of the day and when you've already been to like four in one day, <laughs> you know that's when it's like you're like a little bit, you know, kind of kind of just tired of it. But if you, you know, if you plan well and you really only go to you know two two maybe three a day then they're great and like they're super pretty and you're like wow i'm in japan so i'd say worth it but you don't try to go to too many at once also the shrine's main building itself is quite striking heading due west we arrive at nijo castle this is another good spot that allows you to take a break from temples for a little bit and try something different just inside the main entrance, there is a little kiosk that has a short audio overview of the history of the castle, and I actually found it to be really interesting. One thing to watch out for is the inside of the castle is closed on Tuesdays, some months of the year, so if you're hoping to actually go inside, watch out for that. That being said, on those Tuesdays, the castle grounds are significantly less crowded, so take it or leave it. Isn't it kind of impressive, like, the people just build all the rocks it is interesting. by hand? Yeah, like a huge, these huge like boulders essentially. Of course, like they don't have like you know big tractor in it, then uh -huh. they just do it, lift it up, right? The humans and because uh -huh. this was built in what? 1806. 1806. Yeah, 1806. Okay, so it's not incredibly old, but it's still pretty old. I think they're like cutting rocks. Mm. Scales are really high because it's very flat and yeah, it's hard to just like you know straight up. Uh -huh. I wonder where they got the rocks from too. Like, you know, you don't just find rocks like this. <laughs> like <laughs> that big rock. Yeah, right? like that's not just something like. You just see on the side of the street, you know, like you gotta like you gotta get bring it, from it somewhere. bring it down from I think mountain or yeah, something. Probably. One really great thing about pretty much everywhere in Japan is that you've always got vending machines. So like you've always got options for drinks. Like normally, at least in places in the U.S., like you have water fountains, um, and sometimes you have places where you can like buy drinks. Oh, did I? Have one? I um, but here, like, if you want some mugita. Mucha or some coke or Aquarius or whatever. So, honestly, really nice. Heading north, we have probably the most famous temple in Japan, King Kakuji. So we're actually somewhat hesitant about recommending this place. It is the most famous, of course, for the beautiful golden pavilion and surrounding gardens, but it is so busy that it can somewhat take away from the experience. And sadly, unlike other popular temples, it opens at 9 a.m., which is not nearly early enough to be able to avoid the crowds. So keep that in mind if you do decide to come here. It is such an icon of building that it is hard to miss, but it kind of feels like Epcot. So this is a special ice cream. Mm -hmm. You can see the gold flake. It has actual gold on it, gold leaf. So we're gonna eat gold. So do you think the gold makes it taste better? <laughs> yeah. <What was> that? <laughs> we see a reaction. Oh, okay. That was crazy. Now going southwest, we hit the Arashiyama region. Now there's a lot of stuff to do here, but we'll just mention what we think is the best. Kay wants to go touch the water down there, so... Um, <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that cold, right? Yeah. It's too, yeah, it's too pretty cold, but... You wanna take a dip? Huh? You wanna take a dip? Uh, take a swim? Uh, just, just jump in! It looks totally safe! <laughs> yeah, it's safe as a hide Yeah, I'm being sarcastic, it's definitely not safe. All right, we're gonna go to like Monkey Park. Monkey Park, Maca Japanese macaques. They're like world famous. Itemiru. Kimashou. Ay. It's really not that hot, but we're sweating so much. It's just so humid that like, it just doesn't evaporate at all. Welcome to Japan. Welcome to Japan. It's very humid. Don't come during the summer. I mean, it's not really summer. Yeah, but yeah. like, if you come in the summer, Motoyobai. Yeah, it's gonna be killing you. Yeah, so we don't recommend it. It's a monkey. 
macaque. Surprisingly, the view is like actually really good from up here. All right, let's go find some monkeys. Monkey Park is a bit of a hike, but it's actually a lot of fun. This is a park where there are essentially just loads of Japanese macaques running free with no fences or cages or anything like that. Sorry, it's empty. There's a little bro hanging out over there. His face is so red. He's gonna come over here? It looks like he's coming over here. He's, so, he's walking with confidence too. <laughs> he, he rules this place. It's well done, yeah. Hey, little guy! <laughs> bro, he's totally just chilling. <laughs> there are a few rules about what you can or can't do, but for the most part, you can just hang out with the monkeys. They really don't care about us at all. They're just like, they're just on their way to get their food over there. <laughs> That's all they really seem to care. Next up, right next to the famous Togetsukyo Bridge, there is a spot where you can rent rowboats and paddle around the river for up to an hour at a time. Kyo woke up this afternoon. This is way fun. Okay, so they're actually go buy some snacks, selling on the on the river. That's pretty sweet, actually. <laughs> And then, of course, you have what Arashiyama is most famous for, the bamboo forest. Like the other popular spots, this place is pretty busy during the day, and you'd best be served coming here early in the morning if you're looking for a more relaxed vibe or a better photo. One alternative to this bamboo forest is Kodaiji, which is a small temple just north of Kiyomizudera, back where we started. It also has a beautiful, albeit smaller, bamboo forest that is significantly less crowded, so it might be another good option. Not to mention the giant Yozen Kanon Buddha statue is right next door, which is another interesting spot to visit. A little bit farther north than Arashiyama is Mount Kurama. This is a little bit harder to access than some of the other spots in Kyoto, as it's about an hour from Kyoto Station by train, but it's an incredibly beautiful little village in the mountains that we think is well worth the trip. There are a variety of places to eat here, plus a few shrines and temples nestled in the forest. It's just a great spot to walk around and explore. Heading all the way back to the start, we have Fushimi Inari Shrine. This place is famous for its tori gates, and Kay told me that there were 30,000 of them. There's actually only about 800. <laughs> Thanks, Kay, for the false information. <laughs> Doesn't know what he's talking about. The path itself is actually a pretty long hike, which is reasonably inclined at some point. This is great because despite being very busy at the bottom, if you continue to climb to the uppermost parts of the shrine, the crowds really thin out. At certain points, you might even end up being totally alone, even during the afternoon. The hike itself takes a one to two hour round trip, which is probably why most people give up even before the halfway mark. So, we're about one third of the way up. We're right here. <sighs> All right, Kay, you can do this. I believe in you. How long did it take to? I don't know, I didn't, I didn't pay attention. Maybe like 45 minutes? Not that long. Not that long? It's been like 15. <laughs> it's been like 15 minutes, it hasn't been that long. It's not even possible to get here. No, yeah, it's been 15. But then the 15, man. The main problem is we ate too much in the lunch time. Sure. We did eat a lot. I'm just mostly sweaty more than anything else. Like, it's just hot. Is it that hot? Oh, I mean, I it's mean, not that hot, it's just humid, you know? Like, Because you're just like exercising so much. Like, um, I don't know if you can see, but I'm, I'm dripping right now. Can you see it in my forehead? It's like a waterfall. There's definitely not very many people here, though, like now that we're... Because they give up. Yeah, like, there's, currently there's us and one other person. So, not bad. Shuga. It's just kind of a bunch of, are these Ohak? Are these graves? I think so. There's a bunch of graves, and then we've got our little nice, nice little shrine up here. Kyoto has so much to offer and you could seriously be here for months and still have new places to explore every day. Yes, it's probably one of the busiest cities in Japan, but there's a good reason it is. If you liked this video, feel free to watch our other guides or head to our website. We provide one-on-one -on -one trip consultation, among other things, and we'd love to help with your trip. Thanks for watching, everyone.